The sponsor of the controversial hate speech bill, Senator Sabi Abdullahi, has vowed, or rather bowed to pressure from Nigerians as he declared that he would remove the death penalty as the maximum punishment for offenders in the proposed legislation. Uh, legislation. Now joining me again on this conversation, I still have Damia Debayo and of course Francis Chilaka, both political analysts. Okay, I'm going to start with Dan because he's the younger <laughs> you know, of the new generation. Are we more likely to do hate speech then? Is that what you're saying? You know what I'm I, I saying? Don't know. <laughs> we're the Twitter age, we're the okay. Instagram age. Francis has been there when it was just newspaper and crosswords. I think they worked, they worked pretty effectively, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> anyway, but the, the idea that we need a hate speech bill when mm -hmm. we already have certain things in the Constitution that almost are alike, mm -hmm. that can deal with the issue, mm -hmm. is where my problem is. Why do we even need this? Taking out this debt penalty, does it make it fly better or, no. or what? <laughs> well, at least let's start with the point that, you know, the death penalty is not a debt rent for any crime. At least I think, you know, history has proved to that. Even for us as a nation on a national state level, I mean, the death penalty has been pronounced for kidnappers and I don't think, I've not seen kidnapping, you know, go down in states where we heard that for rapists in too. as well. And, you know, so a lot of the time that, you know, this is usually, you know, playing to the gallery, gavel banging. But again, we have a problem with the Senate as well. Um, we have a high churn rate as well. We don't have a lot of experienced legislators as well. You know, you have, you know, there's a time, I think it was 2011, we had 75%. 2007, sorry. 2000. The guys that opposed Obasanjo's um, third, third term bill. bill. You had 75% of them out as well. So essentially, you have people coming into the Senate to wait to go and run for governor as well. So unfortunately, the quality of the leaders in the Senate is unfortunately... Mwah, so we're going to get people that would come out and do these things that, you know, they have no intention or idea of saying how they follow it through as well. And I remember reading his um, justifications for why um, he decided to do the bill and how the fact that um, it was going to cause, it was the chance to cause destabilization in the country. And I was going to talk about the fact that, you know, this man's from a northern state as well, that, you know, a lot of states have Sharia law imposed as well, which frankly as well, the... Rigmarole to juxtapose that against the constitution is something that has been long running. And, you know, they're pressing but issues. I keep asking a question, one question. Okay. I've asked it on social media, I've asked it on the <laughs> show, I've asked it on the news. Can somebody tell me what tweet, mm -hmm. what statement made people take up arms, in, like in the case of Rwanda, and killed a whole generation or killed people from some village because of a hit? I, I, I want to know in Nigeria, has there been any? Mm, no, Nigerians will value ourselves. <laughs> so, 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 so. Are... What is the premise? Because he said, okay. if you have lost family, mm -hmm. if you've loved, lost loved ones because of a hate speech, and I, I'm thinking to myself, no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of any in Nigeria. So where are you coming from, sir? I think we need to ask the senator some questions. And I'm going to ask him one. Um, I remember, was it 2014 or so, he was stoned in his own constituency. <laughs> Because they say, his people said that he has not done anything for them. I mean, you have. I mean, in other words, that what, is a hate what, speech. What are you trying, is what, it? No, no. What he's trying to do is to get you know gag his people from also demanding for accountability. That's just what he wants to do. And sometimes I ask myself, you know, that's what you think he wants to. That's do. what I. That's what I think he wants to do. Now, going a step further, you know, so long as you have a Senate, governors who did not perform eight years in their offices go to the Senate and become senators, nothing will work. Yeah. Let us say truth to power. Nothing will work. We must have a system where for you to be a senator, for you to be an honorable member, you must be a man of proven honor and integrity. Where can we find them? They are, they exist. And that's well, why I keep saying that. We need Mr. President and-, and, and Where do they exist? They need to look at In this. our political parties? Yes, where exactly are they? need to look at they? this electionary bill once more. Nigeria would be a great country if the process of election is worked on. Nigeria would be a great country if that document called the 1999 Constitution is trashed and a people-oriented constitution. You see, a constitution that does not allow you to recall a senator or a honorable member... It makes it almost impossible. It's, I mean, it, it simply means that you've given the person so much power. And that's a problem. So once they are there, they feel you can't do anything. But there was a though there is a process for recall in Nigeria. There is. It's a we, it's, it's, I know, uh -huh. but mm, let's not make it sound like it's not 
it's non-existent. It is there. No, when you have right. something that you and cannot, if we're determined, implement, no matter how exist. rigorous it is, I'm sure we can get it, can we? Well, I think the point though. Is I want to believe that we can, right? Well, I want to. The point though is that the electoral arts skills it in a very unfair way to the incumbent as well. It's the same thing with when you go to tribunal after someone's been sworn into the office as well. It's almost impossible, as well. So the fact that it exists in technical terms as well. I mean. The constitution, for instance, gives us free speech, and then we have, you know, bills like this as well. So again, um, you see where I'm coming from as well. Usually, these things are usually balancing acts, and unfortunately, it's not weighed in our favor. Um, but the very um, while we talk about the fact that senators are inexperienced as well, it's the fact that citizens are basically almost powerless as well. It's the fact that you know this is the space that we go to social media, you know the media and the press. Okay, I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing. We have to take a quick break. When we come back, we will bring some reactions to that social media bill uh, and what must have pressured Mr. Sabi, uh, Senator Sabi, to uh, you know change his mind. And uh, when we come back, we'll have more conversations on this day with us. We'll be right back.